28 hours of lecture so let us see how much time we can we can spend this time but uh, before i formally uh, begin physics uh, let me tell you let me first extend my heartfelt thanks to each one of you for being here with me i feel very privileged to have intelligence uh, intelligent audience and intelligent students like each one of you and i also extend my thanks to our common friend professor yuta kunj so yuta and each one of you have made me feel privileged to be here i mean talking to you some topics some ideas on string theory and super string theory okay so i welcome you all once again and with that we can now formally talk some physics so <coughs> uh, i would in the first place actually you see string theory is a subject even when i uh, start my first few lectures on quantum field theory i need lot of background for for introducing field theory like you need some concepts in classical mechanics you need some concepts from special relativity you need covariant formulation of electrodynamics and then you little bit of non relativistic quantum mechanics and then relativistic quantum mechanics and then you make a transition to quantum field theory so going from discrete systems to the continuous systems with many infinitely many degrees of freedom that is what is field theory and so from uh, relativistic quantum mechanics and relativistic quantum field theory the main difference uh, it might be good to recap it this is the interpretation of the field in quantum mechanics you interpret it as a wave function and there these equations like dirac equation klein gordon equation maxwell's equation they are single particle wave equations and this uh, uh, we talk about the wave functions however when we make a transition to field theory then we start with a action with a lagrangian with a lagrangian density and then use the variational principle of classical mechanics obviously extend it to quantum field theory to obtain the equations of motion and what you obtain these are the field equations so that becomes different than relativistic quantum mechanics right so klein gordon equation is the same as it looks in or dirac equation or maxwell's equations they are identically the same as the look in relativistic quantum mechanics but then here the field phi or the spinner field psi they are fields quantum fields okay so that is the primary difference there and now when we think of going to string theory and then also to super string theory then there are many many more concepts which are needed and we need to recap and keep them in mind possibly forever all the time so we know what we know and what we want to know further so everything remains logical and we develop our concepts on a logical basis but then there are too many concepts okay so we can have a quick look at some of the key points okay why we need that what are we doing and so on so the first most important thing is for fundamental forces of nature and we can talk about the relative strengths so if i said the strength of the strong nuclear force to be equal to 1 then electromagnetic in the directions would have 10 to the power minus 3 uh, b uh, 
and so these are the relative strengths of these four fundamental forces of nature the gravitational force is obviously the most obvious of all of them as soon as something falls out from my hand or from anywhere it goes to the earth right so this is the most obvious force however this is the weakest among all these four and now supposing i would not go into too much elementary concepts here but reminding ourselves about the relative strengths of these forces is very important what is happening that these first three first three of these forces they are combined into the relativistic quantum field theory one of the most accurate theories of nature that we have known so far and it is it has been experimentally verified to several digits extremely well tested theory and this takes care of these three strong electromagnetic and weak interactions so these three interactions could be studied in a similar fashion within the framework of the relativistic quantum field theory however gravity is so obvious and so important falls out from this group and it cannot be studied in this group of the relativistic quantum field theories that so far but we do know we can construct the field theory corresponding to gravity and then we can try to even quantize it so here one is able to quantize these three consistently okay so our our aim would be to understand gravity theory and then possibly also construct the corresponding quantum field theory so the main question the right is is need for and it is called qg quantum theory of gravity for short qg so need for a quantum theory of gravity. this is what we would try to understand why do we need it and how do we proceed to to construct a consistent quantum field theory quantum theory of gravity okay i would i would gradually differentiate also in the quantum field theory of gravity and quantum theory of gravity the two you will find according to my understanding uh, i will i will i will tell you how these two are different okay so uh, perhaps we could remind ourselves about mr newton and mr einstein for in the context of gravity theory you see before we know what is a quantum theory of gravity what could be the correct quantum theory of gravity we need to understand classical theory of gravity so classical even newton's theory is classical even einstein's theory is classical but then what is the difference in the two newton's theory is not a field theory newton's theory of gravity is not a field theory of gravity however einstein's theory of gravity which we call a general relativity is a field theory is a classical field theory of gravity and extremely a extremely well understood you people are experts on this already and we know that this uh, einstein's gravity which we call as 
can be relativity. So general relativity is a very extremely successful theory. And it describes the physics at large scales. Physics of the universe, physics of the solar system, physics of the neutron stars, physics of the boson stars, physics of black holes, physics of wormholes, all large distance physics. And very accurately, very nicely. And here, I forgot to tell you the, the main key point between these two. So, what happens? If I have these two masses I hold in my hand with masses m1 and m2 at some distance r1, I change this r1 to r2. What happens according to Mr. Newton and what happens according to Mr. Einstein? According to Mr. Newton, as soon as I change r1 to r2, the force given by m1 m2 by r square changes instantaneously without any loss of time. However, Mr. Einstein tells us, no, 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 this is not possible, this is incorrect. Why? Because nothing is allowed to move faster than light, including the gravitational signal. So, gravitational signal, the carrier of the gravitational force we call as graviton, which is a spin to particle. Last year we had even derived it in the spectrum of the bosonic string theory and we would recap all those things again but so graviton is a spin to particle and it is the carrier of the 